everybody and welcome back to my channel. I'm so happy that you wanted to join me today because today we're going to have an exciting topic indeed. But first of all, let me know if you like this background or if you liked it the way it was before. I think it was a little messy, but maybe it was like more personal and whatnot. So let me know what works for you or if you don't care. That's also okay. Today's video is about zero waste date and gift ideas because it's Valentine's Day soon. And there's a lot of stuff you can do with a significant other or a flirt or a date that's super sustainable and even zero waste. But if you really enjoy this holiday, you don't have to give it up just because you want to be more sustainable. You just have to change the way that you celebrate this holiday. But before we get into things, today's video has a sponsor. Yeah! This video is sponsored by Treedom, an online platform where you can buy trees and they will be planted by farmers all around the world. Treedom supports small farmers communities all around the globe. And the cool thing is that when they plant your trees, you can actually keep tab on your tree online and see how it grows and how it's doing. I love this idea. Trees are great and literally one of the most important things on this planet. Trees turn CO2 into oxygen. That makes trees the lungs of this planet. And I'm so glad that there are initiatives like Treedom that make sure that more trees are planted every single year. But how many trees are they planting, you may be asking. Well, Treedom was founded in Florence in 2010, so 10 years ago. And since then, they have planted over half a million trees. Actually, 600,000 trees in South America, in Italy, and in Africa, supporting small communities along the way. So thank you so much to Treedom for sponsoring today's video. Now let's get into the date ideas. It may not come as a shock to you, but Valentine's Day is a commercial holiday, which means that there are lots of products that you can buy. And we have a tendency whenever we like someone or something, we buy stuff. And um, that's no good, bro. The impact of Valentine's Day gifts emits enough CO2 for a car to go around the entire planet almost 4,000 times. And that's only from US consumers. So there's a lot to tap into and there's a lot to make better. The first thing that I think you should definitely reconsider when you are going on a date or you want to give someone a gift, and this applies not only to Valentine's but generally flowers because cut off flowers actually has a very, very large impact on the planet. During Valentine's Day, almost 200 million roses are sold in the US, leaving behind a footprint of 9,000 metric tons of carbon dioxide. The reason why flowers has such a large footprint is because a lot of flowers are grown with pesticides and pesticides not only pollute our water, but also our soil and it's also a risk to human health. Then there's also the notion of how we grow flowers, because not that many climates are actually capable of growing good flowers. So a lot of them are grown in greenhouses and greenhouses are super unsustainable because they require a lot of power and fuel to keep going. So whenever you want to give someone a flower, there are several other things that you can do instead. First of all, you can, of course, see if you can find local flowers if you live in a climate that allows them to grow outside that's significantly better than having them transported to you or having them grown in a greenhouse, most definitely. But what I actually prefer to do is giving them a plant instead because a plant has a much longer lifespan than flowers anyway. Flowers are kind of bound to die because you've cut them off, but a plant you can keep nurturing and it will keep growing and it's just a way better gift because it will last the receiver so much longer. And then there's the notion that different plants have different capabilities or different functions. So some plants are edible and maybe that has a significance to the person that you're giving it to, or it cleans the air and makes your space, your home, your living space more breathable and nicer to be in. So there are different kinds of plants that serve different kinds of purposes and you can sort of tailor that to fit the receiver. And that's really thoughtful and nice. So that's something you can consider to skip the flowers and to buy a plant instead. Another really popular gift during the Valentine season are chocolates. We buy a lot of chocolates. In the US alone, over 36 million heart-shaped boxes are bought every single year. And there's lots of room for improvement when it comes to the chocolate industry. It is actually one of the foods, except for, you know, beef, cheese, and lamb, that has the highest carbon footprint. So there's definitely some stuff that we can do. Also, the chocolate in general, the sugar industry, is notoriously known for child labor as well. So if you want to make sure that your chocolate was produced ethically and sustainably, a good first step towards that is looking for organic and fair trade chocolate because when it's fair trade you know that workers did get paid fair wages and did not involve child labor and I think that's really really important. If you can try to avoid buying the cheapest possible chocolate you can find because the cheaper it is usually it means that it's perhaps not really sustainable no matter how it's packaged and um, 
yeah, a lot of stuff were definitely not taken into account when this product was made. So if you can try to avoid buying the cheapest possible chocolate whatsoever and try to go for something that's organic and fair trade, it's usually a little bit more expensive, but you know that the money goes a good place and not just into a design or a brand or prestige or whatever, but it goes to people who made your product. You can also avoid chocolate altogether and go with another snack, another sweet treat. Yeah, but if you know that your significant other likes another sweet more than chocolate, then don't waste the carbon dioxide on the chocolate, but buy the other thing instead. So a wine. Generally a lot of wine and sparkling wine and champagne, but not all sparkling wines are champagne. I don't know why I had to say that. But a lot of wine is not vegan. And uh, I am continuously baffled by how many wines are not vegan. And it took me a rather long time to realize that not every kind of wine is vegan. So if you want to make sure that your wine is vegan check out Barnivore you can uh, it's a website obviously and uh, you type in the name of the wine like the brand of the wine and it will show you whether or not it is vegan and it's just a really nice thing it's super easy to do so you can do it while you're in the supermarket and that's a good idea you can also go to a wine specialist and ask them to find something that's organic vegan generally more sustainable when it comes to wine we of course have a lot of options to buy wine in glass bottles but make sure to recycle the bottles, obviously. Um, and try to avoid box wines because box wines come in Tetra Pak and Tetra Pak is really, really hard to recycle. And for the most part, it's just thrown in landfill. And that's kind of not what we want. Then there are other small party date favors like uh, balloons. Just don't. <laughs> But seriously, it's a really unnecessary item and if you need a balloon to declare your affection then perhaps try to look for other ways of expression. Um, I've never met an adult that which life depended on a balloon, so... I never met anyone which life depended on a balloon. But I mean, it's just a really unnecessary item and you can show your affections in many, many other ways. Balloons and balloon sticks are the number seven or six most common item found in uh, ocean plastic, so just take that into consideration. Then there's also stuff like glitter. I see a lot of products around uh, Valentine's in general when it comes to love that are covered in glitter, like greeting cards or general miscellaneous objects that are covered in glitter. And if you want to be more sustainable, skipping that glitter is the best thing you can do. That's not actually true. That was like very dramatic, but it's definitely a good idea because you know what glitter is? Glitter is plastic. I've talked about glitter so many times on this channel and generally within the last two months, so many times I've talked about glitter. I'm so sorry that I keep repeating myself, but I just keep feeling that we need to talk about it more because I keep running into people that think their life depend on it, on that, or that it's like a giant restriction on them to not use glitter. It's not. <laughs> It's glitter and it's plastic and it ends up in our water, in our soil, in our bodies, in animals. Yes, you can also get biodegradable glitter. So if you think that your life depends on it, then do that instead. But generally, it's an unnecessary item to the point where I just don't really see its function at all. And it's super easy to face out. Just start doing it right now. There are other ways of expression, just like with the balloons, there are other ways in which you can express yourself that does not require super unsustainable and really polluting products. Then there are tons of miscellaneous romantic products that you can buy, like Valentine's themed decor, clothing, stuffed animals, so many things that you can buy and it to me, it feels weird. Generally, I have also on this channel spoken about how occasional decor is not something I'm super down with. Buying like decor for your house or for your car or for your just generally buying stuff that's occasion specific, even to a holiday, but also when it's really bad to a specific year. It's not something I'm down with at all. If you found some decor in a thrift shop or if you have some heirloom decor, it's not that I'm angry about. I'm angry when people go out to supermarkets and like general discount stores and buy tons of heart shaped small stickers and weird things and put them everywhere and then they have to throw everything away. And there's also stuff like tablecloths and cu cutlery that's disposable but Valentine's themed. So many things and we don't need any of this. When it comes to sustainable gift giving and I've made videos about this in the context of Christmas but it also applies on Valentine's Day. 
Secondhand shopping is a really good idea and always a plus in my book. Then you can of course just buy something from a local artist or generally something that is more conscious than something that mass produced. Or you can simply just skip occasional and themed gifts and buy something they can use all year around. Now let's talk a little bit about the date. There are tons of things that you can do with a flirt or a date without it being super unsustainable. Because generally the fun thing about dates is that it's something that you experience together, it's an activity rather than a thing. And just by the fact that it's a, an activity rather than a thing is a sustainable and good idea. We don't want things, we want memories. Neato. And there are tons of great activities that you can do. Just remember to don't rely on disposables, but try to bring your own stuff instead. There are tons of things that you can do together that does not have a large carbon footprint. And these things are great in my book. Here are some examples. You can go to a museum. You can go see a play. You can go to a concert, but remember to try and not use disposables. You can go to the museum. You can go for a walk or a hike. You can go on a picnic, but don't rely on disposables. <laughs> that is my answer. You can go out to bowling. You can go out for dinner. You can also go play arcade games, or you can try a new form of exercise that none of you have tried before. There are tons of things that you can do. And depending on what kind of person you are or your date is, you can do things that are super nice, comfortable and chill, or you can do things that takes you guys a little out of your comfort zone. Both things are equally fine. There's so many nice experiences that you can have with your significant other. Just choose one. I also have a couple of examples from my own life about what happened when I was on specific dates. Me and Jens have been on so many nice dates to weird places. We've been out bowling like old people. Um, it's not usually very common in Denmark for just two two people to go out bowling, but we had a great time. We usually go to board game cafes because we both like playing board games. Maybe Jens enjoys it a little bit more than me, but I do definitely also enjoy it. And going out to a board game cafe or like a board game bar, make sure that you don't have to buy the game yourself, but you can use it in a collective environment where everyone is sort of sharing everything. So nice, so nice. If you don't have to buy something and you go out and just use it the way that you want to use it and then you can leave. I love that. But a couple of years ago, I was on another date with uh, someone that was not Jens. We have only been dating for a year and a half, a little bit more than that, I don't know. So, but before Jens and I met, I was on a date in Aarhus and the guy I was meeting up with uh, had invited me for like a small picnic kind of thing where we were just going to have some wine by the pier. And um, he knew a little bit about my job. I guess he found me um, on Instagram and he saw what I did, which is completely okay. And uh, he bought a glass bottle of wine and was like, yes, we can recycle this, it's better than Tetra Pak, go, go, go. But then he brought plastic cups from a bar so we could drink out of them. And um, so I don't want to be impolite. So when someone doesn't think about this, it's not that I'm going to just let them know and just make them feel really bad. Um, I try to sort of save my energy for other things. Um, so I wasn't actually going to say anything, also because I haven't, I didn't know him that well. I didn't really want to just get all guns a blazing on him. And uh, the second I had the glass in my hand, he said, oh, you don't like plastic. Oh shit, oh you don't like plastic, oh no, what can I do instead? So I ended up um, saying that what we can do is that you got them from over there, go and return them, they'll probably just put them back, we didn't use them, and then we just drink out of the bottle. Save the environment. <laughs> but it's just like, it's small things. So bringing actual reusable glasses are way better than just relying on disposable plastic. And maybe you don't want your fancy nice wine glasses to go out with you. Then you can just use jam jars or whatever. You can use a lot of things that are not plastic, that are not disposable. It's just these small things. And if you go on a date, it's usually not super heavy on disposables because it's like an, an action that you do. So something just like remembering these small bits and bobs whenever I go to the movies or to theatre or something with Jens, I always get the tickets on my phone instead of having them printed out because that way I also avoid a tiny piece of trash. These were just some things that you can do in order to be more sustainable on a date and also some gifts that you can give a date. I hope that you enjoyed this video and this was somewhat helpful. I hope that it was. Again, a big thanks to Treedom for sponsoring this video. It's a super cool initiative and I really hope you guys are going to check it out. I left the link down below. And there's also a discount code for you guys.
Treatum has a great Valentine's campaign going right now, where you buy two trees, one for yourself and one for your significant other, and that's a great gift idea. You can both keep a tab on your trees and the trees are connected, both in the way that they function and where they are planted. Jens and I, we got a tree each and they are both planted in Kenya and we can check them out and it's really, really cool. And I think it's super romantic. Let me know down below if you have any Valentine's Day plans or if you are planning on doing something with a boyfriend, girlfriend, significant other, flirt, whatever. Let me know down below what kind of plans that you have and how you choose to make them sustainable. See you guys in my next video and take really good care of yourselves. Until next time. Bye! Thank you so much for watching this video and also a special thank you to my Patreon supporters. You guys help me create green zero waste contents and I love you guys. You can find the links to my social media accounts down below and the link to my Patreon on this screen. Bye!